because just like that, we're already ready to calculate our p-value. So there's two methods for calculating the p-value that are often used. The first is using the Shapiro-Wilk p-value table. The second is using the ones complement of w, and then we derive the derived uh, mu and sigma to calculate the p-value associated from the normal CDF. So we're going to use the first one. You will note that some statistical packages will use method 2, but method 2 is generally reserved for the Royston expanded version. So we'll go over what number 2 means next week in our video on the Royston expanded Shapiro-Wilk test. But for today, let's take a look at the Shapiro-Wilk p-value table. And this one is, is kind of similar to the um, AI constant table, except that each uh, column now represents a p-value, and each row represents a different sample size. So to approximate a p-value for any given sample size and W test statistic, we're going to use linear interp interpolation. So let's take a look at that. The linear interpolation formula is p equals p1 plus p2 minus p1 over w2 minus w1 times w minus w1. So the p here, the, just the regular p, is the associated p-value with our w, the calculated w test statistic. p1 is the associated p-value with w1, and p2 is the associated value with w2. So w1 is the largest of the w's in the column, and that is still less than w, and w2 is the smallest that is greater than w. So let's take a look at an example to kind of flesh out what these mean. So in this example, let n equal 30, and let w equal 0.9551. So what we're going to do first is we're going to find the row that has n equals 30. So we come down here and we find 30 and we draw it across. And now we evaluate each of these um, to figure out which one is the largest but still less. So 0.9 is less than 0 0.9551. 0 0.912 is still less. 0 0.927 is still less. 0 0.939 is still less. 0 0.967 is greater than. So now we know that W1 is 0.939 and W2 is 0.967. And we know that because this is the largest of all of the W values in this row that's less than our, our calculated W, and this is the smallest one that's larger. So we draw these up, and these are P1 and P2. We plug those into the equation, and that gives us the associated P value for our W. Mm -hmm.